Well, babe, you're officially a mom. And you're officially a dad. <laughs> so my wife, Angela, is definitely my favorite blogger and YouTuber extraordinaire. And she's a pretty amazing wife, I must add. And my guess is that a lot of you may have seen my husband, Matt, on TV or in the movies. Wyatt from Timeless, Liam from 90210, anyone? Chicago from Pitch Perfect 3. I mean, he's bringing the sexy. All right, all right. So if you guys didn't know, Angela and I created a podcast called Hello Bump to chronicle our journey as expecting first-time parents. We really just started it for something for us to look back on, but we ended up really loving our weekly chat. Yeah, so much so that we couldn't stop there. I mean, now is the fun part, right? Now is the payoff for the nine months of pregnancy. Now is where our life begins. We have a brand new beautiful baby girl and we are so in love. And we want you guys to come on this new journey with us of figuring out, frankly, how to raise this little thing. We know it's going to be tough at times, but we also know the rewards are great. We're going to be chatting week to week about the joys and the struggles of learning how to do this parenting thing. I'm pretty sure we're going to mess up a lot. But from every mistake comes a lesson that we can pass on to you. So join us in this wild ride as we undertake our newest challenge, parenthood. Hello, Hello baby. baby. <laughs> Oh, man. I mean, the week we thought we had last podcast mm -hmm. just got like worse and worse and worse, didn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it did. Mostly for you. Yeah, uh, because after you got sick last week. Well, I was two weeks ago now. Oh, God. Over I two weeks. I'm, it's been two and a half weeks since I've been sick. I can't even keep up. Okay. Because I don't think when we recorded the part one of our love story last week for Valentine's Day mm -hmm. that I had been sick yet. Nope. You had not. But um, in, you know. You had a cold. Yeah. But, you know, in, in uh, what would turn out to be fantastic luck. Turn of events. In a, in a fantastic turn of events, mm -hmm. we spent our Valentine's Day, at least, well, home. We spent at home, literally not doing a thing, mm -hmm. because your boy came down with his own stomach virus, mm -hmm. or food poisoning. Or whatever. We don't even know. We still don't know. Like, how do you even know? I don't know. Like, when you look up food poisoning and you look up stomach virus, they're the exact same symptoms. Yeah, I think it's kind of hard to tell. <sighs> irritating let me tell you something <laughs> i uh there was a particular sandwich that i ate at a particular place and i don't know if that was it or not <laughs> i will never eat that sandwich again yeah p.s it had sprouts on it raw sprouts alfalfa sprouts alfalfa sprouts i don't even know what alfalfa sprouts are evidently i ate them evidently they're about number one among all foods they're for in the food top poisoning. three for food poisoning yeah so if you take anything away from today's podcast, don't eat sprouts again. Not Brussels sprouts. That's not what we're talking about here, oh, no, by no, the way. No, no, we're no. talking about raw sprouts. I get down with some Brussels sprouts. Yeah, but those are cooked. Hey, why do you think it is that when you're a little kid, everyone's like, Brussels sprouts. I don't know. And they're really good. They are good. I mean, little little glaze on them, little bacon maybe. Oof. I mean, I make them great with Parmesan. Right? Mm-hmm. It's like one of those things, you know? I don't know. I also, don't get it. when I was a kid, I felt like guacamole Ugh. was like. I don't really remember hearing about guacamole as a kid. I mean, maybe not, but just the, I think that the name guacamole. Like guacamole is for rich people. Rich. <laughs> <laughs> you got oh, you got guacamole. Rich. <laughs> off, off track here. That's something that we say all the time. By the way, our friend Crystal says it mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah. Oh, you guys got bottled water. Rich. Mm -hmm. Every time she comes over. <laughs> <laughs> Without it's bail. like Dasani. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, anyway, any any Hooters. I spent the freaking Valentine's Day sick. Well, it was Tuesday that you got sick. Thursday was Valentine's Day, so you were on the road to recovery at that point. Thankfully. Well, what I can say is I, I was in bed, like in and out of sleep all day long, and Angela on comes Wednesday. in on Wednesday. She goes, "Oh, because you you sent me flowers the day before." I sent you flowers the day before. I had them delivered to our house the day before Valentine's Day because I was like, well, you know, you try to order flowers on Valentine's Day. You never know what's going to happen. They could get lost. They could not show up until like 9 p.m. So I was like, I'm going to I'm gonna do this the day before. 
you know, so it's kind of like a no fail. And uh, it didn't fail. But of course, I was in bed, nodding in and out of mm-hmm. consciousness. Mm-hmm. And uh, she walks in and said, oh, babe, they're beautiful. Thank I felt so you. bad. Yeah. I was like, I hope you like it. <laughs> so anyhow, uh, it's, it's been a really, really rough week mm-hmm. and week of recovery. And I know we we hoped that <laughs> you guys did some great things for Valentine's Day. We hoped you had a good date. Yeah. Uh, as we kind of told you when we were signing off last time, we hope you enjoy it. We hope you do something great for your girl if you're a guy listening. Mm-hmm. wonder what our uh, demo is of guys Can we, versus I, girls. I feel like we could possibly look that up. I don't I don't know about that. Maybe. I'm pretty sure it's probably more girls than guys. I would think so. But, but maybe I mean, some couples are listening. We, I remember being in the airport when Kenny was, what, really young? Or no, maybe I was still pregnant. And we had a guy approach us and say, I listened to your podcast. That's right. Remember? That's right. What yeah. a great guy. Yeah. So anyhow... Um, Hope your Valentine's Day went great. We have not had ours yet. We do have some plans. We think we're going to fly out to Vegas, perhaps, and see the Backstreet Boys, <laughs> which is this is a really backwards thing for me to be doing because <laughs> Angela's in love with the Backstreet Boys, and I don't know why I would take her to Vegas to see the Backstreet Boys, but uh, I guess we are because I care for her, and that's what she wants to do. Do you only care for me, or do you love me? I I I care for you deeply. So we're not at that love stage yet, right? <laughs> we're we're not, we're not we're not we're not quite there. We're not quite there yet. Okay. <laughs> Actually, we're good to know. We're definitely there. Duly noted. <laughs> we're definitely there, and uh, we're going to talk about it today. We're going to talk about the engagement. We're actually going to talk about how deep is our love? How deep is our love? You would like if. Why would you choose Bee Gees over Backstreet Boys when we're on the topic of Backstreet Boys? <laughs> like, all I have to give. Um, I don't know. Anyhow, <sighs> let's get this thing started. And let's do it. Say, uh, go ahead and roll this. Uh, Beautiful beam footage. I'll roll the little intro song. <laughs> What company is America's largest independent natural product company where not a single product or ingredient that they sell has been tested on animals and they're planting 1 million trees by the end of 2020? Grove.co. That's where I buy a lot of my cleaning products, actually. Grove.co makes shopping for natural products so easy. You don't have to search for a local store hoping that they carry what you want or worry that you're overpaying for organic products from questionable websites. Grove.co is the only site that you need to shop to get organic, eco-friendly, and sustainable products from top brands like 7th Generation, Dr. Bronner, and Mrs. Myers, which I love. Plus, Grove is a B Corporation, which is a new kind of business that balances purpose and profit. They're legally required to consider the impact of their decisions on their workers, customers, suppliers, community, and the environment. So when you shop at Grove.co, you're doing something good for you, your home, and the planet. Start right now and get a free $30 Mrs. Meyers gift set at grove.co slash baby with your first order. This is a special offer for our listeners. Get a free $30 Mrs. Meyers gift set at grove.co slash baby. That's grove.co slash baby. All right, Ethan, we're back. Well, let's jump in. Okay. Last week... We had started to do like our little love story thing, how we met, mm-hmm. and it just takes a long time. It does. It took a lot longer than I thought it would. A lot of life happened. Well, so it's also a dialogue too. It's a conversation more so than just a story. So I think that that's where the time gets taken. Yeah, true. So <laughs> today, of course, we thought we'd pick up with part two of, uh, I guess, what we're calling our love story. Mm-hmm. And last week, if you recall. We left off with the engagement. Well, we were going to talk about the engagement Mm -hmm. and we kind of stopped ourselves. Mm -hmm. So I guess we can just kind of pick it right up with the engagement. By the way, we never never introduced ourselves. (laughs) We never introduced ourselves. I'm Matt Lanter, by the way. This is my wife, Angela. We have this podcast, Hello Baby. If you're still listening and you don't know who we are, uh, kudos 
for staying here, you know, eight <laughs> minutes and before we even introduce ourselves. If you do, then you don't need to listen to this introduction. We got a 13-month-old kid. Her name is McKenley. Yep. We started this podcast when Angela was pregnant called Hello Bump. We continued it with Hello Baby, talking about all things parenting. But last week and this week, we're taking a little break from parenting to talk about us. Our love. So that's who we are. That's what we're doing. Mm-hmm. That's what we're about to talk about. Yep. Buckle up. <laughs> What, like, like this is going to be a wild ride? Yeah, it's just so wild and crazy. No, I don't think so. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. starting with our, <clears throat> I suppose, engagement. So we, so we left off that I relocated out here because you gave me an ultimatum because you're a terrible person. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, that's where we left off is that I relocated out here <clears throat> to LA from Ohio and, um, it was a good, it was a good uh, relocation. It was, it was. I mean, you didn't really look back. No, I was fine. I was 26 years old, I think, right? Yeah, you were ready to get out of the house. I was, I was older. I was wiser. I was ready to be married. I was ready to, you know, for the next chapter of my life. Um, I relocated out here. I changed job titles. Um, obviously, I, I had to change my job. So, but I stayed within the same company and I, Moved out here and became a uh, SIU investigator, which is Special Investigative Unit. So I was a fraud investigator for insurance. And I was dealing with car accidents, and I loved it. So yeah, it was like a really seamless transition for me to come out here. I believe you you flew out and shipped your car. I did. And um, no, I, I don't remember this. But I vaguely remember, but like not really. Did I? I had like balloons and stuff like that, like welcome home stuff. And I have a Welcome picture. home banners, right? <clears throat> when you um, got out here. Yes. I owned a townhouse at I, that I time. Look, now I need to look because now I can't remember what you did, but you decorated. I decorated for her arrival. Of course, I was very excited for her to get here. And, and it was a whole new chapter of my life as well. What were you excited for? I was uh, I was excited to have someone cook for me. And, I, I was waiting for that. And clean for me. Yeah. And I was excited to, uh, mm-hmm. you know, have someone tuck me in at night and, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, kiss me on the forehead. Which did. There's the picture. Yeah. So he put up streamers. He had balloons. He uh, had a big streamer. It says, uh, welcome home, welcome home, welcome home. I had a smiley face. Yeah. You, you, you did it. You did good. Banners and balloons. There's balloons floating on the floor. Streamers hanging from the. Yeah. Floating on the floor. So the light fixture. Yeah. And it was really, it was a cool little thing. Angela. um, And that, that day before I left, everybody decorated at my old office too. I guess I should say our plan was um, I had owned a townhouse in another part of town, but I, I believe before you came out, I had actually already bought a new house, right? Or no? Yes. I think I had. We were looking um, before I came out. You were doing like uh, FaceTime calls with me. Actually, that was before you could FaceTime without Wi-Fi. I was taking- You were taking videos on that what that camera. The flip cam. The flip cam. I was taking videos on the flip cam, yep. uploading them. I would send them to Angela. Yep. Uh, the houses and of course, you know, it was sort of like my house that I was buying. It was all my house, but of course I wanted her input because we kind of knew that she was coming out and I want her to have input into where she, you know, was going to be spending a lot of time. Mm -hmm. Um, We had full intentions on living in separate places and we'll Mm -hmm. get into that (laughs) because that it was, it didn't happen. It was a little bit of a, a sad time for me too, because my papa died right before I left. Literally right That's before right. I left. Yeah. Um, I was very close to him. He's my my dad's dad. And um I only had two no, I had three grandparents growing up, but my um my one grandmother died when I was a senior in high school. Um that was my dad's mom. And then my dad's dad, he he like helped to raise me. I mean, we were just thick as thieves, him and I. And um he got really sick and he passed. I wanna say was it one or two weeks before I moved? I mean, it was like right then. It was, yeah. It was right then. I forgot about <clears throat> that. So um, the way I did it was I um, started shipping boxes out to LA of my stuff mm-hmm. and um, packed as much as I could on that flight, booked a one-way ticket, packed my car up with as much as I could and shipped my car out, like you said. And um, I didn't look back. Mm-mm. I didn't look back. No. And, and even once you got out here, you weren't like crying really or- I didn't cry you know, even you at the airport, I don't believe. You weren't like I expected. My parents to be sad. were very upset, um, very very upset because I'm an only child, um, and I think if it had been different different circumstances, I probably would have been too. But I knew that I knew that I knew that I was 
coming out here to marry you. Like to, there was just no doubt in my mind that we weren't going to get married. Yeah. And to have a new life. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, she gets out here and um, starts her new job, which coincidentally was really cool because it was like walkable. It was two blocks. Yeah. To her house. And she would actually walk to work some days, and mm-hmm. uh, which was really neat. I loved it. And um, we had what? Not that long in that townhouse before we moved out. I mean, a maybe couple of weeks. Maybe three weeks, maybe. Yeah. I mean, actually, I could probably look at that on my phone too. Yeah. Because I, I actually moved out here on um, July 1st, 2011. Do you remember going to the July 4th in that park next to our, next to the townhouse? I think I have pictures. I have pictures of us on the beach on July 2nd oh, the in very Malibu. Next, the very next day? Yep, the very next day. That's right. And then... No, I don't have. Um, oh, yep. Here we go. July fourth, we went yep, to the park. To the I have park. a picture. That, I, I have remember because it was so fresh that you that you just got out here. Mm-hmm. It's true. And then um, the first picture I have of our house, this, the house that we ended up buying and moving into, was mm. August twentieth. Mm. So, I but I feel like we moved in before that, right? I don't know. That's neither here. Nor I don't here. know, but that's a good two months almost. Huh. Interesting. Okay. So uh, that's, I mean, that's that. That's how Angela got out here. We started living our life. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, I guess we should say fully intended on living apart. Yeah, the house that, that was that the I intention bought, the entire time. The house that I bought had a guest house on it too. Mm-hmm. And um, we, look, obviously LA is extremely expensive and it's more cost effective to live in one spot instead of two spots. Um mm-hmm. You know, me me and Angela try to, we believe that, you know, we try to do what is the right thing to do according yeah. to uh, the Bible and according to, you know, that sort of thing. But um, we just felt like, I have this guest house here. Why not live in the guest house? Instead of paying rent. Instead of paying rent for yeah. an apartment. Yeah. So we went out and got some furniture and stuff for the guest house and- mm-hmm. And um, it actually, that didn't even really stick much. (laughs) She pretty much spent most of the time in the house with me. Yeah. But uh, hey, it is what it is. We're married. We got a kid now, so. uh, Yeah. (laughs) Well, so I moved out in July and um, speed ahead to May. We were going to. The next May? Mm Mm-hmm. So was that 10 months? August, September, October, November, December, January, February. April, May. Yeah, 10 months. So 10 months later, we're going to you to do a photo shoot. Well, I was going to London with Jessica Lowndes from 90210. We were doing a photo shoot in London and we were recreating uh, Queen Elizabeth, Prince Philip, some photo shoots that they had done. And it was really cool. You can actually go online and look those up probably. And from London. It was for CBS Watch Mag. Yep, that's right. With our friend uh, Jeremy Murphy. Mm -hmm. And from London, he actually offered to pay for a hotel and our ticket uh, on the channel train down to Paris. So we went from London down to Paris. Of course, knowing all this, I was like, what better of a way to propose to a girl than in Paris? So here's the thing, though. Leading up to this, we knew we were going. I had the time off of work and I kept dropping hints. Do you remember that? All the time you were. Uh, All the time. I remember specifically driving down the road one night and I said to you, you know, Paris would be an awesome place to get engaged. And do you know what your response was? I remember I had said, babe, to be honest with you, we just redid our pool at the new house. We had to have have it resurfaced and redone, put stone up and all that. And I was like, we just spent a big amount of money. You know, like that probably wouldn't be (laughs) like financially responsible. I was so disappointed to do that. that to me. I was so disappointed. I was like, Mean, We're going to like the city of love. Meanwhile, I'm I'm picking out rings. Um, I'm having, I had a ring made. Tell them that, like how you did that and like how it transpired, like you getting like your, your ring deal, like going off like a drug deal and getting the ring. <laughs> I had the ring made by a friend in Ohio who uh, does rings and, and we knew them and trusted them and um, it- I went to school with her. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I had it made. It was really pretty and- um, she was awesome and flew the ring out here and, um, <clears throat> we actually met like in a park in Beverly Hills, like in the parking lot. And <laughs> it was really funny cause it was like a, it was like a drug deal. This is like, 
I don't know, a few days or maybe a week prior to when we left for London. I knew I needed to have it. And so... And I didn't even know where you were that day. I don't yeah. know how I didn't catch it. Met her in the park, got out of the car, and it was like, you got the goods? And she's like, yeah, I got the goods. <laughs> I was like, great. I, I'm going to have my business manager wire transfer you. Wait, was Cece with her that day? I don't remember. No, I don't think so. I think she was with a different friend. Okay. Anyhow, she exchanged the goods, a.k.a. diamond ring, and um, and that was that. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Stashed it away, put it in the luggage. By the way, traveling internationally with a very expensive diamond engagement ring, trying not to let Angela see it, but also not packing it. Because you got to be strategic. You don't want to pack in your suitcase a, a ring that's worth a ton of money. So, so where did you put it? Was it in your carry-on? It was, it was in my backpack, in my carry-on. Huh. And God, I'm shocked that I didn't find it. I was so scared that for some reason, you know, TSA or whatever was going to make me pull out <clears throat> this ring out of the backpack and be like, oh, what is that? You got a ring there. You know, look, probably they see this more often than they don't. So maybe they don't do that ever. But man, was I scared that the whole thing was going to be blown by a freaking Carl at like <laughs> LAX TSA agent. God, <laughs> God bless them, by the way. They're working for free or they were or whatever. So no knocks, but, but I was scared. So, I don't know how I didn't see it because I'm the one who like takes care of like the luggage and like the packing and all that stuff. Oh, I was very strategic. Long, long flight over to Wasn't London. Wasn't it like, didn't you end up putting it like in a suit jacket pocket or something? I think I put it in a pocket within a pocket within a pocket or something. I mean, yeah. I don't even know. Yeah. So it got to London. You know, we were there for several days mm-hmm. and uh, stored the, I stored like photo equipment and also the diamond ring in the safe at some points because of course that's the right thing to do but then I, I pulled it out of the safe at other points because i knew angela might be getting stuff in and out of the safe because that's where we we're keeping our passports or what i don't remember probably huh. probably anyway had a great trip in london yeah and then we um, had so much fun in london yeah and then on down to paris where we stayed at the plaza atine which is one of the most beautiful Can I just say something really quickly because like to me you were a movie star when I met you. Like I'd never met anybody who was a celebrity, but then it became like, kind of just like, you know, you're just a normal guy who happens to be on TV. Then when we went to Europe, the intensity of your celebrity was so obvious. Like it was just like, do you remember how insane it was? It seems to be more in Europe. Like here in LA, I think we're in this area where like people don't care. We're in a bubble. (laughs) Like, we're in a bubble. People see people every day. No one cares. I didn't realize what it was like, like outside of LA. We, you happened to tweet that we were on our way to Paris. There were mobs of girls waiting at the channel. Do you remember that? I did. And I wasn't even specific. There's paparazzi I- there. Like I got lost in the crowd and they were like shuffling you like through security to get you into the van. And like they're coming back trying to find me to get me in the van because it was like a mob. It was crazy. I mean, and, and I'm not trying to like boast or gloat. I or, am. You know, fame it was or, crazy. I'd never seen anything like that before. It's not even my thing. Like, but if you, yeah, if you're into that, it's, it's, it was, it was wild. But I, I can tell you though, when I went over to promote um, Vampire Suck. Yeah, to Milan. The DVD. I went to Milan and it was wild there too. Yeah, I mean, you had like, girls, cr- like I, you sent me videos of girls running after your van. Running, banging on the van as we're like driving away. Like that's like, Justin Bieber kind of stuff right there. Yeah, it's like, yeah, exactly. It was just the weirdest, weirdest thing. It was very foreign to me because again, that just doesn't happen here. No, not I at all. I had girls staying outside of the hotel, like camping out all day long in hopes that they could say hi to me or something leaving. It was just a really weird experience for me too. Well, let's just pause for a quick second here because I want to tell you about Scentbird. You know, we're talking all about love. We're talking all about romance. We're talking about getting the guy, getting the girl. And what's part of getting the guy or getting the girl and romance and dates? Smelling good. (laughs) And you can smell good with Scentbird. Scentbird is a subscription service for luxury fragrances. You can mix up your cologne or your perfume perfume routine. It's a way for you to discover new colognes or perfumes without buying an entire bottle, which I really love because I tend to buy a bottle and it sits there for years and years and years. I mean, A, it's really expensive and it just takes a long time 
to go through. So maybe you get tired of the scent or I don't know, maybe you, you just only have one and it's like your go-to. But with Scentbird, you can try tons. They've got over 450 designer brands you can choose from each month. You, you try what you want. It's the real deal. You got like Gucci, Tom Ford, Kenneth Cole, Burberry, Prada. They'll send you with you know, the, the sample that you try. It's a 30-day supply. It's about 120 sprays. And if you're not sure what you're looking for, uh, you can just sort through all kinds of stuff. You can look at the ratings. You can look at the reviews. I actually just ordered four colognes myself. What do I like? The Malin Goats Moroccan Fig. I just got that one. I really like it. There's also another one I just got from them, uh, from Scentbird, called John Varvedo's Artesian. I really love that one. I'm excited to try these, and I know Angela is excited to have me wear them as well uh, because I always love finding new scents, and, uh, you know, I, I want to smell good, you know? I want to be sexy. So um, with Scentbird, you can definitely be sexy. And now we have an exclusive offer just for Hello Baby listeners. You can get 50% off your first month today. That's only $7.50 for your first fragrance. You go to scentbird.com slash baby and use the code baby for 50% off your first month. That's scentbird.com. So that's S C. E N T B I R D dot com, scentbird dot com slash baby for you to go and try your first cologne or perfume for just seven fifty. Seven dollars and fifty cents. Sign on. Smell amazing. So um again, yeah, it sort of happened when we went to Paris. When we landed in pa- like not landed, but got off the channel. And then the mobs literally it like parted. And we thought that we were free. No, they were getting in their cars and on their motorcycles and they were following us. Paparazzi were following us to the hotel. So they knew we were at the hotel and for whatever reason, they wanted freaking pictures of me. I don't don't know. Like, you're not going to sell magazines with me on it, right? (laughs) So, um, but they wanted pictures. And every single time we went out, we were there for a few days and I had a big, big plan in place. I'll tell you in a second. But every time we went out, they were, they we were, were being tailed. We were being tailed. Like we got to the point where they had to take us out of like the, the, um, the, the employee's back, door. The back entrance. We yeah. went out through the back kitchen area. Yeah. And they'd have to call up a car to come get us because we like, we, if they could catch us leaving, then we were done. They knew every single thing that we were doing for the rest of the day. Yeah. And I, I've just never, ever experienced anything like that before. I was aware of that because I didn't want like paparazzi following us, taking photos of our, proposal what's supposed to be this like you know intimate thing that's special for me and angela and and i just didn't want it to be like pictures everywhere yeah i, I just didn't want that i'm, I'm not that kind of guy i'm you're a, just you're very private i'm a private guy i guess the fact that we're even talking about this right now is like goes against everything that you it does i told you I, I didn't want to talk about it last week i don't want to talk about it this week <laughs> <laughs> so but here we are so uh yeah so okay so i had this big big plan in place Plaza Atene, and I researched this out. Plaza- Which, by the way, is the Sex in the City Hotel for all of you girls who know it. The, the end when Je- Sarah Jessica Parker is running up the stairs and there's big. That's the Plaza Atene. You might know. It's like got a lot of ivy covered. It's got like red awnings to it. Just super, super classy hotel. Yeah, really beautiful, incredible. Beautiful. So they have a boat. On is it the Cien or Sen or Cien? The, the River Sen. But I don't know. I'm... That runs right through Paris. It's kind of spelled Cien. It's like S I E and. I think it's Sen though. Sen, the River Sen. Anyway, Plaza Athene. They own a boat. It's this beautiful, beautiful wooden boat. Like w- it's it's built out of like. It's like wood colored. Even it's just varnish on a beautiful wood classic boat. And I was mm-hmm. like, this is gonna be freaking great. I'm going to take Angela out on this boat. It's going to be sunset or dusk. Um, and of course, they call Paris the city of light. And as as the lights are you know, lighting up all around us and this beautiful sunset, I'm going to propose in the middle of the, of the river on this gorgeous boat. A couple of our friends, Jeremy Murphy, our friend Kristen Hall was with us. And I was like, this is fantastic. They've got cameras. They can document the whole thing. And they knew it was going to happen. And they knew it was going to happen. Yeah. Jeremy Murphy helped me book the boat, which was not cheap, by the way. No. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think I remember. I won't name prices just because that seems silly. But it was 
not cheap. <laughs> it was like definitely uh, probably a couple of mortgages somewhere. So um, at least. So book this boat. We go out. It's the day of. And uh, what do you know? It's pouring, pouring rain. Mm-hmm. Comple- Not just pouring rain, like sideways rain. It's completely overcast. It's dark out. We get dressed in our finest because after I proposed to Angela, we were going to go have dinner inside the Eiffel Tower. Boom. Go ahead and swoon, ladies. What a romantic proposal, right? Didn't happen. <laughs> we go out on this boat. The freaking fog is low. It's dark. The lights are coming on and you can't even see the lights because it's raining. Matter of fact, you can't even really stick your head. I had, okay. I had imagined, you know, on the bow of this boat or on the stern of the boat, you know, just out in the open, beautiful, you know, on a knee. It didn't work like that. There was an inside part of the boat, like the cubby area, that basically we could not get outside of because it was pouring rain on our heads. A couple of times, we stuck our heads up from underneath to talk to the captain, and we were like, what's going on? We had the, you know, the umbrellas over our heads. Captain knew that there was going to be a proposal. We had champagne on ice Mm -hmm. inside the boat, ready to go. The music was... uh, And just to let you guys know, going into this... I was, because he was acting a little bit weird, I was like totally thinking he was going to propose. Like, I really thought that you were going to propose. Just well, just to give that quick note. Well, I tried to throw her off even some more because I think we got there to Paris and we were out walking around and, and I was like, you know, maybe we should get over to like a jewelry store and I don't know, maybe we can find the ring for us or something or maybe you can, you, we no, can help. No, I was like, I think we should go look at rings. And you're like, yeah, we could go do that. Because we had looked at rings one time in Beverly Hills. Together. Yeah. To give like an idea. Yeah. And so I was kind of playing along like, yeah, we could go look at rings. And... But I'm the girl also who was texting you photos of exactly what I wanted. <laughs> I was doing that, guys. True. It works. It did work. Just to let you know. It worked. So uh, raining cats and dogs, can't do anything. I've got my friends with me. They're on the edge of their seat with their cameras, like, you know, by their side, ready to go when it happens. I'm just looking around going, oh, and by the way, we're totally dressed up. That's what I was going to say. We're, we're, we're totally dressed up. We were going to go to this nice dinner afterwards. And of course, we were going to, uh, the friends were going to go their separate way. And me and Angela were going to have a romantic dinner in the Eiffel Tower mm-hmm. as newly engaged uh, fiance and fiance. <laughs> so um, we're all dressed up. I got like my khakis on and I've got like a- Khakis. I got my khakis. I got like a tucked in shirt. And Angela's got a dress and like high heels on and- all this kind of stupid stuff. I got my hair done like nicely. It just was very, very stuffy. All right. So speaking of stuffy inside, this boat was also stuffy and like fogging up. Like the windows were fogging up to the point where you could not see even. It see, wasn't at all like what you thought it was going to be. Right. Couldn't even see out the windows. If you could see past the raindrops on the windows, you weren't going to see past the fog on the inside of the windows. It was like a, like a car, you know, if you're in a car making out and you just fog up the windows, couldn't see a thing. So, When's the last time you did that? Uh, so, <laughs> so eventually, the the music's like going on the boat. It's just like probably nice jazz or whatever it was, or French music or something. And and uh, I, at one point, I look up at Jeremy Murphy and I give like a cut sign on my throat. The captain sees me and he turns the music off. He's like, oh, "Okay, it's going to happen now." And he said something like something like that. And, and I, I actually think that he went to get like the champagne ready. And I'm going like, no, no. I'm trying to look at De- Jeremy Murphy all like discreetly like that. Ah, ah, ixnay on the, you know, proposal way or whatever. So I was and like, I'm noticing that you're being so weird. I'm like, what are you doing? Oh, my gosh. I was so nervous. Can I also tell you that to get from the dock onto that boat? I was gripping that ring inside of my my pants pocket because I had it in my in my pocket at this point the ring, and I was like, I can just imagine tripping, and and falling in this diamond ring falling out of my pocket into the river in Paris. <laughs> so I held on very tightly to that, and pretty much the whole time as to not let the thing escape out of my pocket. Mm-hmm. Anyhow, back to I'm making cut signs with. He, 
got the captain, you know, turning down the music, ready to pop champagne. I'm like, no, no, wait, no. Wait, did, did you already say that when he when we got on, he came out and said, do you want champagne now or for later? Did you already say that? No, I didn't. But he did say that. As that soon as we idiot. got on. And I was like, I was like, what is he talking about? I mean, you know, did that give too much away? Not really. It could have been like just a special moment, right? Yeah. I mean, like but I it was, was just all weird. I was me. hoping that you were going to do it. Like that was my hope. So you had a little bit of a inkling. It wasn't that I had an inkling. I was just hoping. Like everything that you had said, it led me believe, to believe that you weren't going to do it. Okay. So you were hoping. Okay. Meanwhile, you know, now I have, I have decided to forego this proposal. Mm-hmm. I didn't have a backup plan in place. I just didn't. I was like, I, I don't know. There was no backup plan. This, this was the plan. Yeah. So all I knew was I, like, no. No, in this moment, cancel, cancel, cancel. So I didn't do it. Uh, Jeremy and Kristen were kind of, you know, wondering what was going on. I'm sure they probably maybe thought I got like cold feet or something. I'm not sure. But um, because obviously I couldn't like in front of Angela say, well, I don't want to do it because it's raining. It's not going to be great. It's not going to be very romantic and whatever. It was because you couldn't even stand up. That was the problem. And you couldn't stand up because we were inside because we couldn't go outside because it was raining. Mm -hmm. So anyway, nice ride on the river, I guess. We get off the boat and uh, we hug uh, Kristen and Jeremy and say, okay, you know, see you later. It's like straight up squalling at this point, the rain. We say, you know, see you later. At this point, they had already planned to go their separate ways. Do you remember this? So you were like, hey, do you guys want to like, do we all want to go get some food or something? somewhere or, or whatever and they were like um we actually both have to get on a business call um and it has to be right now and angela was like oh that's really weird it's like 5 or 6 p.m here it's like 11 p.m at home why do you guys have to get on a business call together because they didn't even like work for the same companies no. <laughs> so angela was like that's really i, I remember saying it to you like that they were did, they were acting they were really acting weird, really weird. Well, yeah. they're not actors so, so they go their separate way. Me and Angela, we're, it's raining. We've got, I think, maybe one umbrella between us. I'm in my nice clothes. She's in her nice clothes and her heels. We cannot catch a cab anywhere. It was awful. And it was awful. So we started walking towards the hotel in hopes that we'd get a cab. Why couldn't we get a cab? Because everyone else in the city was in a cab because no one was walking because it was pouring rain. I was going to go over and have dinner at the Eiffel Tower. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to go over there. I can No, you told me that. You said we're going to go have dinner at the Eiffel Tower. Okay. You said I I made reservations for us. And I was like, oh, that's fun. Right. And you're like, so let's start walking that way. So let's start heading that way. Why not? So I think at this point, after we got off the boat, Angela was just disappointed. She felt like something was weird and nothing happened. Yes, I was disappointed. I was like, I thought that you were going to propose and you didn't propose. And I was just like bummed out. I was just totally bummed out by it. So Angela was a little upset and being very weird with me. She was very not talking to me. It was like she was very quiet. (laughs) It's because I was disappointed. And I, but I couldn't tell you that I was disappointed because I couldn't be like, I thought you were going to propose. Because I was like, that would make me look like an idiot. Like if I was like, I thought you were going to propose and you didn't. You know, meanwhile, I'm very disappointed because of everything, how it went down, but I couldn't tell her I was disappointed. So we were all, we were both being weird with each other. Yeah. We, we were both weren't quiet. speaking at all. We weren't speaking. It was very awkward. It was raining so hard. Couldn't catch a cab. By the time we started walking and, and couldn't catch a cab and we we're sitting there walking for blocks and blocks. I'm literally wet up to my calves. Me or, too. Or, I'm sorry, up to my knees. Mm-hmm. The I was water, wearing heels. My shoes were flooded. I'm I'm wet up to my knees. This is so ridiculous. I'm like, you know what? Screw this. Let's just not even go have dinner. It's just crazy. Let's just go back to the hotel and just get dry and warm. And so that's what we did. We went back to the hotel, ring still in my pocket. And by the time, you know, we got back to the hotel dried off did all that stuff changed clothes i mean it was probably it was probably 9 p.m almost yeah it was late and we're starving so i get on yelp yep angela gets on yelp Mm -hmm. we change into comfy clothes Mm -hmm. jeans sweatshirts that sort of thing Mm -hmm. we're like i'm like well this day is over i'll i'll reassess at a later date (laughs) and see where it goes she gets on yelp looks up some places 
we see a place. It stopped raining by this point, by the way. Mm-hmm. It, it actually turned out to be like a nice like night in Paris. She uh, picks a place. We go over there. We have a we have a real nice walk. And there's the inside of the boat. She just pulled a picture up. I just found a picture of us. Yep. So funny. Mm-hmm. So I put the ring in my jeans pocket just in case. Just in case. It's still Paris. I said, I, I thought to myself, at the very least, I still have Paris. <laughs> so I put the ring in my pocket. We start walking. It's a good half a mile or so over to this place. Walk, beautiful walk over the over the bridge into like a neighborhood area. Had a great dinner at this place. I, we we had the place almost to ourselves. Um, Just a little tiny hole in the wall. It was a hole in the wall, but it was really <clears throat> it was a really nice place. Had a, it was a restaurant that had brick wall. duck in the name. I know that. Yeah. It was it was a restaurant that served only the only meat that they served was duck. Duck based stuff. Yeah. So we have a great dinner. Uh, we've got pictures from that dinner. And, and I feel like that the waiter was just uh, amazing because I remember we had desserts. And we were taking pictures and we got out of there. And on the way home, uh, I thought, you know what? I, I don't, I, I don't want to wait. I'm just going to do it. So as we're walking back home near, basically about to go over the one of the bridges mm-hmm. in the shadow of the Eiffel Tower, all lit up. It was was it the Sex in the City Bridge? Did we figure that out? I feel like it was. No, I don't. I don't think so. But I thought it was. I would have no idea anyway. Yeah. In in the shadow of the Eiffel Tower, I stopped her, and we were just looking out in, in the night in the night air, in the night sky at the river below. And I said uh, something like, "You know, do you love me?" And, well, you got the camera out though. Well, I got the camera out. You're right. I got this mm-hmm. flip cam out mm-hmm. and took video. And you started talking to the camera. But I had been doing this on purpose the entire trip kind of documenting the trip. And mm-hmm. I would pull the camera out knowing that I was going to record our moment. And uh, and 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 so I would pull the camera out and I'd say, what are we doing? Where are we at? Are we having fun? What are we, you know? So this was nothing like crazy. I wish we had the the um, audio to play. That'd be fun. Yeah, the audio's ours. <laughs> that's, that's true. I don't ours. even know where it's at. I haven't seen it in years. I'm sure I can find it. It's somewhere. So I, I pulled the pulled the camera out and I said, What are we you know, where are you doing? Where are we at? And you know, Paris, okay. Do you love me? Yeah. Okay, good, because I love you too and and I don't even remember exactly what it was. You said it I do you want to spend the rest of your life with me or I think that's what you said. Some something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And um she said no. <laughs> and uh And that was it. We and went home. Uh, we went home. No, I'm just kidding. She of course didn't say anything. Yeah, I didn't say a word. Because she was crying. And she shook her head. <laughs> no, I think she just... No, I think what you did is you just cried. You had your hands up to your mouth and you were just crying. And you couldn't get a word out. <laughs> and then I think I said like, so is that yes or... Yeah, you did. You finally, after, like I was just standing there and, and you were like, is that a yes? What is that? And like, you, you just needed an answer from me. <laughs> and you, I said, is that a yes? And you, shook, you just shook your head. And yeah. You, yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, of course, we we kissed and hugged, and and that was the engagement. That was like the most perfect moment ever. And then we we went, went back, back to the hotel, hotel and called everybody, Facetimed yeah. everybody. Yeah, it was like eleven eleven thirty twelve a.m. our time mm-hmm. at this point. And yeah, Facetimed people. And Remember so. Facetiming? We called my mom. We called your yep. mom. Yep. We called your dad. I think we called your dad. I think so. Called your sister. Yep. Remember calling your stepbrother. I think I called Mama. Yep. Yeah, we called everybody. I mean, I think I called my cousin Jen. Told him we were, we were getting married. Yep. Yep. So, um, <laughs> that was May 5th of 2012. That's right. We, after that, started planning the wedding. Actually, the first thing we did was we planned an engagement party back in Ohio because everybody in Ohio wanted to see us after that. Yeah. After we got engaged in Paris. We actually, from there, went down to Rome. Mm-hmm. We did a whole like Europe thing. We mm-hmm. went down to Rome, which was, um, that was obviously in- included uh, in the itinerary anyway. Yeah. We went down to Rome. We stayed there for a few days. We got food poisoning. Got food. Uh, Angela got food poisoning. You did too, a little bit. Newly engaged. And um, <sighs> she was, let me just say, very embarrassed that uh, we only had one bathroom and a small room in rome i'll tell you that it much. was awful so, it was awful i was yeah. grossing myself out yeah so brand new ring on the finger 
you know, wanting to be all sexy for your new fiance and uh lighting it up in the bathroom. And bam. Bam, life life happens. <laughs> Surprised you married me after that. So that happened. Then we from there we went on down to the island of Capri, mm-hmm. which is a it's an island off the coast of Italy. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful place. And um yeah, I had a few days there and uh got a painting there from one of the locals, which we, we have, still have never to this day hung up in our house of the blue grotto. We went in the blue grotto. It's crazy that we've never framed that. And never framed it. What where is it? Do you world? even know where it's at? No. I don't either. I have no idea. We paid a lot of money for that thing. Did we? I think so. I don't even remember. So We stayed at a really cool hotel in in Capri. I think it was called the Augustus Caesar Hotel. Look it up. It was. I just was looking at pictures of it on my phone. It's so beautiful. I'm so glad that like I've been able to transfer my photos all the years of having an iPhone because like I can go back and look at these memories as we like think of them. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. I need to look at yours. And what, see how they match up and just put them all together? Yeah. Just put them in a photo album? Yeah, because like we probably have like different photos from different days, you know? Like it right. kind of fill in For the sure. gaps of the things that we're not remembering. We actually think we've got a picture of the pizza that is the culprit of the food poisoning. I just saw that picture. <laughs> we think it was kind of a raw meat thing. It was. I know so, it was. Yeah. It's just in Italy, they just cook their, their meat, you know. Not as much. Not as well done as we do in the States and our bodies aren't used to it. Yeah. <clears throat> but um so yeah after italy we came home to la and then pretty quickly after that went to ohio and threw a really awesome engagement party there yeah it was a beautiful party yeah got to see everybody and yeah and uh yeah and then came back and planned a wedding wedding planning got underway that was intense so that is our love story Engagement That's our story. engagement story for mm-hmm. everybody who wanted to know. Man, and, I got a um, lot of messages about this. Did you? Yes, because you know women love love stories. I mean, I already said it. Well, I just said I said this last week. People love love. Women particularly love love and love stories and that sort of thing. And I don't know. I, I guess we have a pretty cool story, and I guess it's not many people get to, you know, go around the world and get engaged, get engaged in <laughs> Paris and all that sort it of is thing. Really cool. Um, I, I think that, um, well, the majority of people, just the messages that I got, people were upset that it ended where it ended. They wanted to know the engagement (laughs) story is what I got. Everybody always wants to know people's engagement stories. I like hearing engagement stories, honestly. It's fun. It's fun. And I mean, just to know that people are in a, like two places in their life where they're just, uh, it's exciting and it's, it's full of love and like passion and it's it's fun to hear. Do you think that there's ever another time in a couple's life where, a, the the man pulls out all the stops like that to make such a big surprise for his wife. I don't oh think gosh. so. I think it's just the engagement that's like the big thing, you know? Yeah. So it's like, it's just exciting. Yeah. Yeah. I can, I can, I agree. Yeah. I love it. Well, anyway, I mean, do you have anything else you want to add or say? Or does this conclude our, uh, our Valentine's Day two-part special of love. I don't think so. I love you. <laughs> I love you. And uh, I'm glad I'm glad I picked you. <laughs> yeah. I set my my Your my my daggers in, in you. <laughs> my claws in you. I knew from the beginning I was going to marry you and I got you. You got me. So it's been it's been a great well, how many years have we been married now? Almost 6. June will be 6 years. Isn't yeah. that crazy? November will be 11 years that we've been together. Yeah. Ugh. You know, and we chose to kind of like do the married thing for a little while on our own before we had McKinley. Of course, you guys know the whole story of the baby, mm-hmm. but um, we really enjoyed that time and it was great. We just got to enjoy each other and we um, we just like each other. You know, there's like a, there's a, there's just some couples who like the second they get married, they want to start having a family. There's nothing wrong with that. But you and I just like we really prefer each other. We want to be with each other. and We want our time with each other. And I'm so glad that we did that. Yeah. I mean, look, obviously, I don't want to make it sound like we've got this amazing, perfect thing because we sometimes argue and fight. Not a whole lot, but... We don't really fight that much. But we really don't. We're not... We don't have the typical... We're not like a volatile... Couple. Like, we never fight about money. Like, that's the big thing that everybody fights about. You and I always are on the same page there. Well, we're also blessed in that area. I... I Yes, we are. But even if we weren't, we don't ever have disagreements... On uh, how to spend yeah, it. Yeah, like we both are very 
like like minded there. Maybe so. But anyway, um, I I feel like I married my be- my best friend and and. Aw, you do. Yeah. Aw. And it's gone pretty great so far. So. Are you know. saying that so I'll give you a back scratch tonight? I'm hoping. <laughs> it's what I thought. I knew there was an ulterior motive. <laughs> there was something to it. Well, we'll let you know on the next podcast if I end up getting a back scratch. <laughs> <laughs> we love you guys. Thanks for listening to Hello Baby. Hope you enjoyed it a little bit. Maybe you uh, laughed a little or um, reminisced in your own engagement story. Um, and fellas, go out, kiss your girl. Women, go out and scratch your man's back. <laughs> <laughs> fellas, if you're getting ready to propose, do it good. It doesn't have to be huge. I can't imagine that there are many guys that are single out there listening to Hello Baby podcast. I could be wrong. Angela always gets on me for underestimating our audience because I always say like, nah, people don't listen to this on purpose. Of course, I'm joking, but uh, yeah, but, but I, I can't imagine many single guys out there listening. There might be a couple, might be a handful. Might be a handful. You never know. <laughs> All right. Hey, love you guys. Glad you, glad you tuned in. Uh, come back next week and we'll have something new for you. Do you want to say bye? Or oh, anything? bye guys. <laughs> bye. <laughs>